by their ability to recite uh, re to recite long portions like 45 seconds, you know, sometimes even a minute uh, in one breath. And we're always like, hey, cool, you know, it would be really cool if I can do that. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a tip uh, to help you be able to breathe uh, for a longer time. You know, I call this video Iceberg Lungs. When we think of an iceberg, you know, there's a small portion of the iceberg that's on top, floating above the surface of the water. But in reality, like the iceberg kind of like explodes out underneath and occupies a lot more volume under the water. And when it comes to our lungs, the same deal applies. Our lungs are actually a lot like this iceberg in the sense that most of the volume of the lungs is at the bottom. You know, if we have our lungs, our lungs are almost like, like something like this, almost like a triangular shape, <clears throat> almost like a triangular shape, very little volume here and a lot of volume here. You know, even the way I'm drawing it, it's two dimensional. We have, uh, it's like a triangle, but in reality, in, in 3D, this, this is a lot bigger than the small space at the top of the lungs. But when most people breathe, or if you tell someone, you know, take a deep breath, right? And a lot of amateur Qaris do this too, beginner reciters. Uh, you tell them to take a deep breath, and you know, and actually you try this right now. Go ahead and take a deep breath. You'll notice if, if you know, you take a deep breath, you go like this. Your collarbone kind of goes up. Take a deep breath. Collarbone raises up. You know, your upper portion of the lungs is filled with air and you're kind of like trapping the air around your neck area. And what happens, you know, first of all, you're just kind of filling up a small portion of your lungs with air, and you're also somehow trying to like hold it in with your upper chest, almost like you're trapping it at your voice. And when you recite like that, a lot of tension comes out. It's like somebody, somebody listening can hear that you're trying to hold your breath, which isn't, you know, Something that, say, something that you want to hear in a good reciter. In a good reciter, you want to hear that the voice is flowing properly and not that it's like, ah, like, you know, like trapped and strained and all that. So, so what you want to be doing instead is breathing with this lower part of the lungs. More volume here. And really what you want to be doing there, you may have heard the term, you know, somebody says breathing with your stomach. Essentially, like imagine or breathing with your diaphragm, your diaphragm is, you know, uh, there's a muscle at the bottom of your lungs, kind of like, kind of like that, and then your stomach and stuff is down there. What happens when, when you breathe is that your diaphragm, I don't want to make it like too scientific, but essentially your diaphragm contracts and pushes downwards. So then this, uh, so then this part of the lungs like expands downwards and outwards as well as your rib cage expand. What you want to be doing to breathe properly is to be pushing outwards. You know, imagine you had, you put one hand on your chest, put another hand on your stomach. When most people breathe in or take a deep breath, they go and this hand on their chest moves more. In reality, to be taking a deep full breath, you need this hand that's on your stomach to be, to be uh, moving outwards more. You know, so take a deep breath. Your hand on your chest stays the same. So, and this hand that's on your stomach is moving inwards and outwards as your stomach, as the lower part of your lungs expands and contracts. That way, you know, you get the benefit of getting a lot more air. And at the same time, the tension or like, you're using this area of your body to hold the air in your lungs and you're not trapping it up here. So you won't get that same tension in your voice. It's something you've got to practice. Uh, so if you check out the ebook, I've actually put a few exercises you can do to try to get a better feel uh, for doing this. That's basically what you need to be doing in terms of, you know, when we think of breathing long, there's like different points of control. One point of control is inhaling and the other point of control is exhaling. So uh, here we talk about inhaling, if you're able to inhale properly and get a full breath, this will help you a lot in your recitation. And maybe later in the future, we can talk about uh, exercises to help you control your exhalation. But to be honest, breathing properly from your stomach 
will help you a lot more than thinking about how to control the release of breath while you're reciting or something. Sometimes people do this and it, you know, you hear it in their voice. There's this tension, there's a strain. So focus on this and check out the ebook. If you haven't downloaded the ebook yet, uh, www.reciteintune.com slash ebook. You can download uh, your copy of the Overnight, Overnight Kari and we have some exercises to help you uh, figure out how to do this. One, one last thing, uh, I, I, I don't know why, but uh, I don't know if it's something like this chest breathing, I don't know if it's something we learn as we grow up because if you notice a baby uh, when they're sleeping and they're breathing, or like they do this, their stomach kind of goes in and out, it's kind of it's cute. Uh, but some